I have to admit, I walked past my big print in the lake a few times and I love it. Roger, nice to be here with you at Image Veve, sitting in a nice environment. And you have your work shown at the festival. Your work is entitled Escapism. It's about photography, about images. And because we are here in a festival that is dedicated to images, can you tell me what was your introduction to images? Was it when you were a child and you were like attracted by books? Uh well, so I'm born pre-digital, so it must have been an analog. I, the first real experience that I remember with working with images is when I was, I think, 14. I bought a copy, I just entered high school, and I bought a copy at, at the local bookstore of that high school of Gotthard Schuh. Mm. Do you remember uh, the Swiss photographer? Gotthard Schuh, uh, the book was called Insel der Götter. Uh, it was his travel photography, I think, somewhere in the South Pacific. And I made a collage for my desktop. So I with laminated this, it and that's where I did my homework. With on. these old images, yes. black and white, old yeah. classical photography. Exactly. Not knowing anything about it, just I needed something to cut out to make a collage for my, for my desktop. And it, was got, it happened to be Gotthard Chu. It could have been a lot worse than Gotthard Chu is. And what is interesting about what you say, it's your introduction somehow was through a book, a photography book. Mm -hmm. Today we are here in a festival where we celebrate photography and the photography is all over the streets. Uh, it's outside, it can be monumental and part of your work is shown outside, outdoor. Another side is more classical in the museum. So is it the, the right way for you to have your work as a photographer shown on the walls or to be shown but not reproduced in a book? You know, some photographers are more books, other are more exhibitions. What is for you the, the main focus? I think I'm coming, definitely coming from the book side. Um, I also run a small publishing business called Be Frank Books. I think in books. I think all my projects have sort of a beginning point and an end point, always having this book form in mind in, in terms of how big a project will be, how uh, different, how many different aspects of like sort of chronological storytelling elements. Um, on the other side, I definitely cherish the printmaking aspect of photography. I like big prints on the wall. I like the working with these materials. I like working with on the computer with like changing small details of it. So I really like both. The aspect of having work outside, um, especially here I have a, bi a big print in the, in the lake, uh, is, is, is new and fascinating to me and uh, is also a challenge. Um, and I don't know if you've seen, there's also so some of my work is on a bus uh, and there it was very different because all of a sudden scale becomes enormous and, uh, and the work becomes quite abstract when it, it necessarily isn't abstract in, in the beginning, but once it's blown up that big, it's just a small part of my image is, is on the bus. And uh, that is new to me. That was a challenge to sort of wrap your head around it and, um, and cope with it. But it's, it's a great challenge and it's a lot of fun. And also what is interesting here with Veve, because we are out, outside and you just mentioned about your photograph being reproduced on a bus. In a way, you are not in a condition as a you know, visitor going into a museum or a gallery where we you know, we know that we are going to see art. And with this experience, uh, your work suddenly is accessible for everyone because even people just walking in the streets can see that. How was this experience for you here? I, I think it's, it's terrific. Um, I have to admit, I walked past my, my big print in the lake a few times and you see people commenting on it and the, the sunset happened right behind the image. It's like people comment and it's like, oh, there's two sunsets now in one photograph. I love it. it um, this is what it's all about. This is also where I come from in, in terms of bookmaking. I think bookmaking is maybe a little bit of a more democratic way of making art because it's, it's easier distributed. Um, people 
are probably less afraid of opening a book than going into a museum. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a whole other level, this festival is like, it's right in your face and, and it challenges the people of Veve, but also the people that come here to interfere with photography um, in, in, in great ways. And also thinking about the work you have here, it's also a way that is really open to a lot of people because in Switzerland we have these little creamer and you photograph the, the, the lid of, of, uh, and showing all the range of images that are reproduced. This is also something that with this work that you open to everyone because that's an experience with images outside the museum or outside art to look at these images and the way you reproduce them and print them big, suddenly it's a kind of new experience with these kind of stereotypical view landscapes that you decided to photograph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the, the, the subject matter that I photograph, my source material is, is probably the mostly distributed image um, carrier in Switzerland. It's especially when you consider like pre-social media, these images surrounded our, surrounded us every day. Um, every cafe, you have these small landscape photographs of picturesque Switzerland or exotic landscapes. And I think people didn't know or necessarily it sort of, it works more subconsciously that um, you're surrounded by these images, I think, but um, it does something to you. If, if it, does, it does shape your visual understanding or maybe misunderstanding of the world or of Switzerland. By or the landscape. Or the Just, landscapes yeah. in, in general by seeing them. And so this is what, what I'm playing with here in, in, uh, with this exhibition, Escapism. Mm -hmm. um, I have another question about rituals. You know, the violinists, they need to practice every day the art um, writers, maybe they go in coffee shops and they have to be surrounded by, you know, the world and some agitation. So what about you? How do you work? Are you more like working alone in a kind of protected place or do you need to be out and look at the world and be outside to, to make, to create, to make your art? I, I think to come up with ideas, I'm very solitary. Uh, most of it happens on walks. I, I walk every day for about an hour to two hours in, in the forest. I live right next to a forest. So every day I go walk and sort of imagine things, plus newspapers. Newspapers is mm -hmm. the biggest source for any of, it was the starting point for pretty much every series that I've worked on so far. So it's the combination of reading and then going out and sort of thinking about what I've read my actual making the work has always been with people in different countries or even here it's it's a conversation it's a collaboration it always is a collaboration whether it is, is with people that are actually doing work with you or for you or just the printing the retouching the the actual work is a collaboration but the coming up with ideas is is at least in my um case quite solitary and the final question is, we are here in this hotel. Can you imagine that tonight you can invite someone for dinner? And who would that be as a you know, personality? Would that be an artist, a philosopher, a musician, a photographer, a politician, someone still living or someone dead? Anybody you have, you, you can decide for tete a tete dinner. Well, now you just made it very easy. I would probably give our child to my parents and then have a quiet dinner with my wife. That's, that's good. good yeah, enough. so I think that would be a good tete-a-tete -tete at okay. the moment. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you.